Coach. How you doing, buddy? Morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Good morning. <laughs> Coach, I got to ask you one question before we get into the meat of this interview. Uh, Nick Saban gets mad at dumb questions. My wife says, I just love Nick. I get mad at her dumb questions, and I don't get the same response. Uh, when I get mad at her dumb questions, she doesn't say, I just love you, but she loves Nick when he blasts the media. What am I doing wrong there, Houston, with her? <laughs> you might not have that Coca-Cola bottle up there at the front. You know? <laughs> I'm also not bringing in $11 million. I think if I was bringing in $11 million, she would she would probably tolerate me a little more, too, wouldn't right. she? That's right. That's right. <laughs> Dad, yeah. go ahead. Used to appreciate you being on, and I, but I go get into a whole lot of stuff. But I do think it's only fair to you that when this thing first started, you were just certainly trying to clear your name. You weren't af- after any individuals. You weren't after anybody except you were after uh, the people that had sort of used your name to get that clear, and that was about it. You're exactly right, Coach. You know when sat there for about three or four years and ain't going across the ticker is the one that has the majority of violations. And uh, I don't have a notice of allegation from the NCAA. And, and it's just, um, you know, it's frustrating. And so just wanted to clear them, clear my name and, and keep my name out of that deal. And, um, you know, sometimes it, it, it takes a lawyer to get that done. And so um, had no intentions, as you mentioned, you know, try to bring somebody down or hurt somebody. That wasn't the, the intentions at all. Just wanted to get my name cleared and uh, keep it out of the uh, the violation talk. Uh, football right now uh, in the SEC is it's a little bit difficult to really tell which division's the best. Mississippi State and Ole Miss hadn't played anybody, but they've done pretty well. And um, you know, South Carolina's been a little bit of a surprise. Uh, kind of assess a little bit the uh, if you want to Alabama or where the SEC is this right now. Well, the thing is, as we all know, is Alabama, uh, Barry, you mentioned a little bit about Coach Saban, that no one does it better as far as keeping the foot right there on the pedal to be able to say next, to reload. And uh, they still look very, very good on defense, offensively. Uh, I think they'll just they'll keep getting better. But they take care of business, you know. So, you know, they're always going to be there right now at the top. Um, I'm anxious to see how LSU continues to, to pro- progress uh, with um, – with the new offensive coordinator, Coach Canada. Uh, we, we know they can play defense, and they're playing defense without without uh, Arden Key, one of their best players. So I'm anxious to see if they'll keep taking steps offensively because Darius guys, they, they've got playmakers, they're tough, they're physical, and, and they play defense. I, I thought Georgia did an unbelievable thing by going taking their team, going on the road, going to beat Notre Dame, uh, look good defensively, and you got a freshman quarterback that stepped up. He didn't flinch. So I look for them to continue to get better. But you mentioned South Carolina. You got Jake Bentley. You got some players there that um, they, they got a little confidence going right now. So it's going to be interesting. I don't know. Tennessee don't know yet. And um, yeah. Florida seems like they still have problems offensively. Uh, you know there's athletes down there, and hopefully they can get all their players on the field and not have 10 suspended. So – Let's let's see what happens. But uh, on the West, it's kind of the same the same old story. It's Alabama at the top, LSU, and then Auburn looks good on defense. But again, the question again is on offense. Uh, we're talking with Coach Houston, not uh, Coach against Florida State, Alabama. Really got four linebackers hurt in that game, two for the season. And you and I talk about this every time we have you on the show. That's where that recruiting pays off and all that depth where Nick Saban just say next and the guy and the guy runs in there and he may not have ever even played and he could end up being better than the guy that went out. You know, I don't know how deep they are at linebacker, but I think Alabama can say next better than most, and that's how uh they avoid much drop off when they get these injuries. And is that true, Houston? No question about it. No question about it. And uh we don't know their names as you mentioned and don't know who's going to step up, but you know there's a, there's an athlete waiting that maybe doesn't have the laps around the track of the one that was starting, but uh, you know he can run, he can hit you. So it, it, you got to learn their names because uh, it, it's tough when you lose that. You know you lose a couple of linebackers uh, the very first day. It hurts you on special teams. It hurts you in some different places. But as you say, no one can say next better than Coach Saban. Yeah, yeah, Brian Dayball. You know everybody's. 
uh, critiquing his offense, and the, the, all the talk around here is they want to know what his offensive philosophy is. But uh, we, we've been talking about this morning. We think they just kind of go game to game. Hey, what do we got to do to this game to win the game? Against Florida State, they got the lead. I think they realized Florida State wasn't going to score on their defense. So why take a bunch of chances? Just pound the ball, run the clock, and, and get out of there. They ran Jalen Hurts a lot in the last game because I think they saw some stuff on film, and that's what Jalen Hurts does. So I think their philosophy may just – change game to game uh they know they're going to beat fresno state they probably know they're going to beat colorado state they're not going to say it but they'll develop some depth and and they're looking on down the line to lsu and those people who can we count on to win that game that's what alabama is really trying to figure out now in houston no doubt about it and the, the best thing they have going of course is is they know how to run the ball and they know how to stop the run those are two big the biggest ingredients but when you got a guy like damian harris Damian Harris and, and Bo Scarborough, uh, it's the quarterbacks. It's Jalen Hurts. That's his best friend to be able to turn around and hand him, hand him the ball. And But they'll need Calvin Ridley. They'll need uh, Jerry Judy. They'll need these receivers to make some plays down the field because everybody's going to try to make them play left-handed, and that's what we'll find out. But you're right. You know, your Florida State game, you know, to me, they're just a sound to be able to They take care of the ball. They're not going to beat themselves, and they get a, they get a lead. They know they got a defense that can can stop them and get the ball back to the offense. So no need to take chances. Just just you know just keep making it happen. And how many teams can say, okay, I'm going to lose O.J. Howard, I'm going to lose a Darius Stewart, a Reuben Foster, a Jonathan Allen, a Marlon Humphreys, Eddie Jackson, and just okay, let's get the next group ready to go. And um, every, every year it seems like, especially that first game, they're ready to go. Maybe not just hitting on all cylinders, especially on offense. But they know how to win. Uh, Houston, so much criticism, as you know, the defense coordinator Auburn uh, was fired by Clemson, but uh, because it got, you know, got clobbered in, in, in that uh, West Virginia game a year or two ago, and he's done a good job. He did a good job Saturday night. Uh, you know, the, the, the talk has gone from uh, the quarterback is not as athletic as I thought he was. He kept the ball too long. Um, I felt like, you know, if, if he's my son, I, I take up for him. I, I, th- those, those cotton picking, uh, offensive linemen didn't do a very good job of blocking. I didn't feel like, I think he, maybe he did keep the ball too long, but there's a lot of, a lot of stink about that in the state of Alabama. And, and as far as, you know, going to Missouri, they'll win this week, but, uh, kind of cr- critique Albert offensively. You know, the, the, the thing, when, when Gus's offense is going good, if you go back, of course, Cam, Cam Newton was a superman. But he could run and yeah. throw. We had Nick Marshall, the guy could run 4-4. The guy was extremely fast. Now, Jarrett's not that type of runner, but, but I'm like you, Coach. I mean, the guy really had no chance. Jarrett had no chance to sit in there and get the ball down the field. You've got to give Clemson credit. Their defense is phenomenal now. They, yeah. They're they're one of the best in the country. Their defensive line is very very good. They're 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 all, uh, but when you get in the red zone, when you're in the six yard line, seven yard, you you got you got to get in that end zone. You got to make you got to get seven right there. And there's there's ways you can do that. They they've got to get better at, with a little imagination to be able to keep people off balance. I don't care how good they are. When you're on the six yard line going in, let let's get in the end zone. Let's get seven. And you got to yeah. you should have a big back with Petway. But Jared Stidham with a with a with a play action with something quick ought to be able to get the ball to to a receiver whether it be three yards six yards eight yards quick slants quick quick post or quick dig route quick in and out route something that's quick because Clemson defense it, it, it's 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 going to be a mismatch for most people they play most of them watch watch this week it's going to be fun to watch Clemson and Louisville. And, and with a Heisman Trophy candidate uh, at quarterback again, uh, but Lamar Jackson is going to have problems um, if you sit there and hold the ball against that group. You gonna get sacked. Now, the one thing about Lamar Jackson, he can't escape. He can yeah. make things happen. So that's going to be fun to watch. But getting back to Auburn, they they've got to they've got to be able to to have both. Jared Stidham's not that runner. He's not that four four guy. So. You got to be able to. He has a good arm. You got to be able to have plays that gets the ball out quick, uh, screens, draws, delays, swings, those kind of things. And 
and the timing's got to be right. But you've got to go back to the thing they they have to do is to be able to run the football. Uh, Houston, how hard is it for a guy like Gus Malzahn, where he came out before the season said, "Hey, I'm going to be the CEO. I'm just going to kind of over it." But Coach Lindsey's going to call the plays. He's going to call all the plays, <laughs> and then you get in the game over there and the. Offense moves the ball the first couple of series. Then they're having a hard time. So now they're getting closer to each other and closer to each other. And you know Gus probably wants to jump in. There's been some speculation that he tried to call some of the plays. And, and Coach Lindsey said, no, he called every play there, the good and the bad. But as a head coach, uh, I don't know what you what you did when you were in Arkansas and Ole Miss, did you, if you called all the plays or not. But how hard is that to let that go? And then you get into a game like that and you're not scoring, you're not moving the ball and all of a sudden you want to jump in. That's got to be difficult for Gus Malzahn, isn't it? Barry, it is. And, and I called plays, and for two seasons I, I gave up, relinquished those duties and give it to an offensive coordinator. And that is the hardest thing because you're sitting there in your mind, you're going through, ooh, this play, this play, I know would be the perfect time to call this play. And so what happens, you, you want to give that suggestion, but the best thing to do is, hey, you handed the keys to this offensive coordinator you got to take a step back. It's one thing if you're in there on Monday night or Tuesday night and say, hey, let's look at this on third down or let's look at this first down. The worst thing you can do is go in there in between plays, run this, run this, run this play. And it just it's a disruption. And so to answer your question, it's, it's probably hard on Gus. It's probably hard on Gus because he's been, he's been a play caller. And it's probably hard to, to totally give it up. But – to keep the continuity and, and let your guy work, you got to trust that guy. You, you told him he's, he's the offensive coordinator. He's the guy that's going to call the plays. Let him call. Let him call him. But can that cause friction? Uh, all of a sudden, if he does start jumping in, now the coordinator is going to be looking at him like, like, look, what, what do you want me to do? Like, you want me to call the plays, but now you're down here telling me what plays to call. Right. Is it? Can that cause friction between the? I mean, I know the head coach ultimately going to make all the decisions, but does that cause some friction there if they start? It can. Yeah. Yeah. It can cause friction, uh, but the bottom line is, you know, that OC's got to know who the head coach is, and um, that's the bottom line. Uh, he's he's the head coach, uh, but it can cause a lot of problems, and uh, uh, especially you go back in that meeting room and, and that OC's thinking, now, I'm getting this game plan ready. I'm going through all this work, and the head coach isn't in here, and that's where it can really cause problems. And then on Saturday, all of a sudden, he he wants to get back involved, so you either got to get in or get out. Uh, but it, it can definitely cause a friction and problems. Yeah, Beth. I um, it probably a, a answer that you don't know, but you can speculate a little bit. I guess Scott Strickland is at Florida, and they have had ten guys suspended, nine or eight of them on some doing some stuff with money. Uh, there's a talk that they may be continued to be suspended for Tennessee. I don't know how far that goes, and I guess you're going to tell me that it goes it's according to maybe the coach, according to – I don't know what it's according to, but um, is that is that gone beyond Jim all the way to, to Scott? And, and is that is that where that lays with the athletic director, or does, does the football coach stop? What, does he do? what happens there? Coach, you know, I, I don't know the, the whole story, but I, I just know that – you know, if you're if you you got student athletes, you got your football players that are that have broken rules uh, against the university. You know, the, all of a sudden the athletic director can step in. It's one thing yeah. if a guy misses practice or misses curfew, he's late to practice. Blah blah blah. Yeah. That's the coach. But as you get to that other part of it, it probably does go a little bit beyond. What what was so bad is to have that kind of disruption throughout the summer. You knew Florida wasn't going to be right for the first game when you have, oh, we got seven suspended. Now we got eight. Now we got ten. We got two more suspended. And it's just like, oh, my goodness. You know, when, when does it stop? And then you got three quarterbacks, and you're playing two of them, and you're going back and forth, and you don't really know who the guy is. You got a guy transferring in from Notre Dame, Malik, and you get you got uh, Luke Del Rio sitting there probably thinking, hey, I can play as good as these guys can play. So, you got that going, and so really, who owns the locker room? And yep. then with all the off the field distractions, regardless of who's in charge or what, they weren't there on the field. It's tough enough to win, as y'all know, to win one game. But when you take away difference makers and 
Antonio Callaway, a scarlet, the running back. Uh, you, you just, it just, it wasn't, you didn't go in the season right. And so it's going to be interesting to see how Coach Michael Wayne handles all this because this is, this is rough road right now. And, and it doesn't look like everybody's in sync and you're looking for the, who's the next guy, who's going to be suspended next. Yeah, uh, Houston, and I don't know if you can comment on this, but Leo Lewis uh, was going in front of the committee supposedly yesterday. I don't know. They didn't really – nobody really saw him. They saw the coaches coming out. But uh, I, I guess if I were Ole Miss and Mississippi State, when when a kid like that, I guess he'll be lawyered up when he gets in there uh, and the lawyer will tell him what to answer and what not to answer. But that's got to be scary for both of those sides there. He, a kid in there in front of the NCAA uh, – that's got to be some uh, trying times for those schools just to kind of figure out what's going to come out of that. Well, no question about that. You know, and, and of course, the timing couldn't be worse for Coach Mullen. You're trying to get a – you're right in the middle of your uh, preparation if the seasons begin, and then you have that distraction. Uh, you know people are going to be talking. It's going to be in the paper and this and that, what's going on. So it, it's just a mess. You know, it's a bad mess, and uh, it, it doesn't – it just doesn't help anything. It, it makes it tough on teams. Make make it tough on your team when, especially, he's missing practice and missing film study, missing school. Uh, they having uh, having to go to the courtroom. Yeah. Well, yeah. we will. Well, thank you for being on today, Houston. I, but hopefully, our questions will be. Well, they will be. It's such about uh, what's going on right now, and you know, every week football. And we appreciate you taking time to be on each week. And and uh, if, you know, we'll be darn sure that uh, we ask questions in the right way. But uh, we appreciate it very much, Barry. And I oh, yeah, always do. Always do. I got one story to tell you. I was okay. To one of my brothers last night, <laughs> uh, Dickie Nut. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. He, and I, he said, what's going on tomorrow? I said, I'm talking to them. I'm talking to the real coaches tomorrow, man. <laughs> and uh, he said, well, look, tell this story. I said, okay. So <laughs> the one I wanted to tell, Coach, was he'll never forget and really appreciate what you did. Um, he was just named interim coach at Arkansas State, had to go to Barton Coliseum in Little Rock. And, Coach, you wore him out about 40-something points. And after the game, as y'all go to shake hands, it wasn't a drive-by. He kind of he was just going to shake hands and just kind of keep walking with his head down. You, you kind of grabbed him and said, hey, 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 Dickie, keep doing what you're doing. Stick to your knitting. You're going to be okay. And you don't know what that really – did for him, Coach. He started he beating me, good. too. <laughs> but he didn't, he didn't beat you like you beat him that night. <laughs> that was a beatdown. But the bottom line is, uh, appreciate what what you did that night, and um, appreciate y'all having me today, guys. Thanks, okay. Coach. Appreciate Thanks. it. Appreciate it.